Hi, good evening, and I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. And we are going to get into this book today, The Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. This is Take 44, and it goes like this. And before we get started, I certainly hope that peace and blessings have been upon you this day. And may it be upon you well until the rest of this evening. Now let's get it started. Today there are many popular black men TV. Are radio evangelists sprewing all kinds of varied interpretations of Christianity. They sell prayer cloths, hot numbers, crosses that glow, holy paper, and other trinkets they swear will bring the owner good luck and special blessings. They have huge followings and exhibit no shame at ripping the people off in the name of Jesus. The black man thinks that the rules or bylaws of a religion are designed to make his life miserable. He has picked up many bad habits that rob him of life longevity and good health. Yet, when it is suggested to him for his own benefit that he stop such vices as smoking, using drugs, drinking alcohol, eating pork, carrying weapons, or promiscuity, he thinks these regulations restrict him from having a good time. He has become so far removed from high moral standards and healthy living that he perceives giving up his vices as depriving him from consuming things that make him happy. Hmm. He is internally, eternally, excuse me, in search of artificial stimulants to make him feel better and become addicted to substances and tastes that slightly delay the true reality of his days and nights. When his forefathers were brought to America, they were not using intoxicants, chemicals, or nicotine, or caffeine. These are bad habits he picked up since his original demise. The black man does not think that he can live without these unrighteous practices, even though to stop them would lengthen his life, save him money, and return him to his undefiled state of consciousness. Resuscitation, resuscitation, recitation. I'm going to spell it. R E S U S C I T A T I O N is painful to him because wrongdoing is presented as justifiable and convenient. A sensible person in full charge of his mental capacities would embrace any program that eliminates the need for stimulants and immoral behavior. The black man rejects any program that requires him to clean himself he does not know that he must be clean internally in order to think 
clearly. He seeks a lifestyle that permits him to practice his vices and still authenticates his sincerity for purpose. No such program exists. And they mock the black man who tried to live in a vice-free life and label them squares or fanatics. Righteousness is not admired or sought. It is sad that he allows his vices to keep him separated from his God because no God will accept him while he practices his unholy alliances. The information and descriptions on the previous page is not presented to insult or make fun of European religions or holidays. Europeans have every right to believe in their own religion and celebrate in the way they please. However, the black man has not been afforded this privilege and has instead become the victim of a very cruel and long-lasting hoax. He was raised to ignore his own presence. He was forced into this predicament in a long time ago due to being fed repeated gulps of positive information about another race, which intentionally excluded his existence. His brain became muddled trying to digest the disinformation he was given while frantically trying to sneak a little information about himself. He got indigestion. Hmm. Hmm. This disease has already been linked to the slavery process endured by his ancestors to preserve his life. To uh, vaccinate him with this slavery, everything that was real to him and verified his life was dissected out of his daily lifestyle. The psycho-emotional damage is immeasurable, as yet only partially calculable, calculated. Every iota of seemingly unrelated misinformation he was given must be analyzed and removed one step at a time. This chapter attempts to outline selected data objectively by linking examples of how the black man was vilified by European Western precepts. He has neglected to consider the overall effect of living a lie. Repression is a safety mechanism for him because his ego is unable to bear the gigantic pain of the 500-year-old sham. And weakened by such a waste of time, he doesn't know how to rearrange his beliefs to be grounded in truth. The truths that pertain to his life and history on earth. He should not only feel any guilt about disregarding the European's religion because they share no remorse about ignoring his. He most certainly should consider that white scholars and theologians write and rewrite the Bible 
at will. Got this version, that version, this version. We're going to get a, a, a different version. There are now several versions available, all claiming to be authentic interpretations. Hmm. Black men preachers are at fault here for continuing to represent the slave master's religion to black people attending church searching for salvation. They tell their church members that they are praying for them, but they are really praying on them. Now, I'm going to spell those so you can understand the difference. I know it sounded the same, but it's certainly spelled different and meaning two different things. They tell their church members that they are praying, P-R-A-Y-I-N-G, for them. But they are really praying, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, on them. You know when you have a predator and a predator prey. Like how you may have an eagle and you got the mouse. It's for consumption purposes. The praying. Hmm. And is it for who they're praying on's benefit? Or is it for the predator in order to benefit on what it's praying on? Hmm. Just a little dissect, dissect decipher that one just to get a 360 and look at it from a different view not looking at it from the okay I see you praying but to look at it from the P-R-E-Y-I-N-G okay praying on them for personal elevation and financial gain this chapter will inspire a lot of debate because the black man has never been openly challenged on his religious beliefs. Factually. The black man does not realize that being a Christian does not just mean that he attends church. Christianity is a frame of mind. A way of thinking and acting. A type of behavior resulting from Christian teachings embedded in him. Embedded. You know how you brand something? embedded in him when he was a baby boy. Now we can certainly uh, change that word if you're a female listening to this. Where the Christian teachings embedded in her when she was a baby girl. Hmm. Now that's going to end chapter 9 where our next chapter I'm going to give you a preview of what it's going to be. Sexuality and relationships. Ooh. Sexuality and relationships for chapter 10. Now that does complete chapter 9. And just a little quick think in regards to the baby boy. Just think about when was they trying to take out Jesus? Wasn't it when he was about two? The babies? Wasn't he going after the babies? Didn't want it to grow up, huh? Just, hmm. Hmm, what's going on? They're, while they're young, while they're babies. All right. Be blessed 
and peace be upon you. I will talk with you soon here on Palm Praise 2. Until then, I want you and your family to be blessed. And later, y'all. Talk to you later. Peace be upon you. And peace out from Palm Praise 2. Stay tuned for Chapter 10.